So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Oh, we always got something cooking around here, don't we? Well, I've got a couple recipes y'all are going to absolutely love. One thing, because they're easy. You can throw them in a slow cooker and walk away and uh, come back later and you've got some delicious meals going on. I love my slow cooker. And um, I love macaroni and cheese now that I've found this recipe. Because for then, I just wasn't big on macaroni and cheese. But anyways, we're going to be doing two slow cooker recipes that you can also do on top of your stove or in the oven, either one. And also, the macaroni, um, you can start this macaroni out with uncooked noodles. And that's what the recipe says. Um, I like to go ahead and, and cook my noodles a little bit and then put them in there because I just like the texture better. So going into this recipe, you'll see that I'm putting cooked noodles in there. But just know that you can put, start out with uncooked noodles. You just have to cook it a little bit longer. So let's get started with our recipes. The recipe calls for a whole pound of uncooked noodles. I cooked my noodles because I just like the texture better. So here is a whole pound of cooked elbow macaroni. We're going to be putting in a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Then we're going to add about two and a half cups of whole milk, or you can use 2%, whatever kind of milk you have or that you use. You can use half and half. We're going to add about a half a teaspoon of dry mustard, a whole stick of butter, and you know this has got to be good. We're putting in a whole pound of shredded cheese, whatever kind, sharp cheddar, whatever kind you have on hand or that you like. We're going to put in eight ounces of cream cheese that I've cubed up. And we're also going to put in eight ounces of Velveeta cheese. And this is the only time you'll see me use Velveeta cheese. We're going to put in a little bit of black pepper. I'm not going to put in salt because with all this cheese and that salted butter, I think it'll be salty enough. We're going to put this on low for about two hours. If the noodles were uncooked, I'd put it on for about two and a half to three hours till the noodles were good and done. So we're going to put the lid on it and let it cook. And it's done, y'all. And I'm telling y'all, this is some of the best homemade macaroni and cheese you will ever eat. I'm not big on macaroni and cheese, but I love this stuff. We're going to start out by browning our roast. I'm just going to put about two tablespoons of olive oil on the bottom of my slow cooker. This is an 18 quart Cuisinart slow cooker. And it's down in my Amazon store. It's one of the best slow cookers. I use this thing all the time. I've got about a three, three and a half pound chuck roast here. And I salt and peppered it on that one side and I put a little bit of garlic powder. And I'm gonna salt and pepper this side So we're just going to sear the, both sides of our roast, get a good sear on it, and brown it. Now we're going to flip it over, 
and brown the other side good. It just locks in all that flavor. Now we got it brown on both sides. We're going to start adding our other ingredients. I've got some little new potatoes here. And I'm just going to put enough just for me and Mr. Brown to eat on. It's just going to be me and him. You can use the regular sized potatoes and just cut them up in bite sized pieces or, or cut them in half, however you like to cook them in a roast. We also love carrots with our roast. Now you don't have to use just carrots and potatoes. You can use stuff like cut up some turnips, uh, cut up some parsnips, you can cut up some butternut squash, stuff that you have grown in your fall garden to put in here with your roast. Be good. I've even cut up chunks of cabbage and stuck down the side. Turns out really good. Now we're going to start by putting a couple of bay leaves here on our roast. You just got to make sure you dish them out before you serve your roast up. And I cut up two big onions. And to me, especially on a roast, you just can't get too much onion. Just when you think you've put enough onion, put you a little bit more. Because they cook down and they just make the meat and vegetables taste so good. Especially these sweet onions. I get these at Walmart. I don't remember the name of the onion, but they're so good. They're so good on a hamburger. And these onions will cook down really good. They'll be soft and tender. You could just cover this on plum up and it still wouldn't be too many onions to me. You can even throw you some whole mushrooms in here if you want to. Throw you some fresh green beans in there. Now I've got three garlic cloves here. And I didn't mince them up. I just kind of uh, chunked them up a little bit. And I'm going to just throw them here on top with the onions. You can't have too much garlic. Onions and garlic are really good for you. Okay. This is the secret ingredient. This is a cup of coffee. It's not too stout, but it's not a weak coffee. Some leftover from Mr. Brown's coffee this morning. His coffee pot. And I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm telling y'all. Like I tell you, trust me on this one. This is low sodium soy sauce. And we're just going to put uh, about a fourth a cup. A little over a fourth a cup. We're going to add a whole stick of butter again. You know I love my butter. And I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'll put some more pepper on top. You could add you a little bit of oregano if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put just a little bit of salt. And I know you're probably thinking that's not enough broth in there, but it will make quite a bit of broth. So we're going to put this on low for eight and a half hours, and I'm going to go on to work. Okay, I am home from work, and I come in, and I smell this roast of cooking. It smells so good. And I want you to look at the juice that this roast made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything out, the meat and the vegetables, and get the bay leaves out. And I'm going to put me, um, I'm going to make me a cornstarch slur, and I'm going to thicken this gravy up a little bit. If there's a little bit of fat in here, I may try to get a little bit of that fat out, but I'm not worried about that. It just gives it that much more flavor. So let's get our meat and our vegetables out and start us some some gravy, some thick gravy. Okay, on my slow cooker, 
you can turn this on saute or simmer. Uh, it's just a really good all-around slow cooker. It has a lot of different functions on it. But I've took my meat and my potatoes and my carrots and everything out and set them over here. And now what I'm going to do is I turn this on high on uh, simmer, I think it is. Or see either on saute, one or the other. But anyways, I've got it on high. And what I'm going to do is I took a half a cup of cold water and about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Uh, you can use tapioca or something like that. And uh, I'm going to add it to this gravy. And I'm just going to leave it here. Now, if you don't have a slow cooker that you can do this in, just take your, uh, your gravy out of here that you want as much as you want to thicken up and put it on in a pot on the stove and you can do it that way. But with me being able to put this on high, it'll start to boil and it'll start to thicken up here in just a minute. Now I tasted this and it does need just a little bit more salt and pepper on it. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll put a little bit more uh, seasoning in it and then I'll put it over my my roast over here, and then we'll serve it up for supper. Now, I hope y'all like this recipe. It, it's a wonderful uh, way to cook a roast. And the slow cooker has become my best friend over the years. It has helped me out with so many suppers. And we do eat uh, roast every once in a while. We cook pot, uh, pork roast too. I love pork roast cooked in a slow cooker. But uh, it, you can just make really, really good meals in these kind of slow cookers. Um, it's good for Sunday meal. Come home to church and you've got roast cooking. It just smells so good in the house. And all you got to have is maybe a salad or another side dish and some hot rolls to sop up that gravy and you've got a really good meal. We've got our gravy thickened up. I just turned it on high and it, it thickened it up really good. So now we're just going to take our gravy and I'm just going to pour it over this roast and all. And if I had not put potatoes in here and made mashed potatoes, you could use this gravy to put over your mashed potatoes. But this is some good gravy here. It'd be good to sop up with a piece of bread or a hot roll or something like that. So dinner's coming together. We're going to sit down, make us a plate, and eat. Roasting good in that, Paul? It's way past tender. <laughs> it is. It's really good. It's really tender. And the roux is wonderful. That gravy roux. Mm-hmm. Sop that bread up in that gravy. It'd be so good to sop that bread in. 